Hi and welcome back. So let's have a little look at the Arrhenius equation one more time. So that is the rate constant is equal to a times e to the minus ea over rt. And I think we've talked about this being the activation energy, the gas constant, the temperature. And we call this the pre-exponential factor just because it's before the exponential term. And uh, the question is, what does it really represent? So it turns out that this factor here is often considered to be the product of two other things. Uh, Z is the collision frequency, so the number of times, if you like, the molecules collide per second. And P is the probability that the molecules collide with the correct orientation. So it's the probability uh, the molecules, so the reactants, collide with the correct orientation. So the groups on the molecules themselves, right, they have to hit each other, the ones that are going to react. And for a small molecule, the chances are they're just going to hit naturally. But for a very large molecule, there might only be a very small part that it has to react upon. And so if those don't collide, right, you're not going to see a reaction. So let's take a look at a couple of different animations, and we'll kind of look and see what exactly we mean by this probability factor. So let's take a look at a chemical reaction between ozone and nitric oxide. And so these two molecules can react and they can form products. And so, of course, the first thing that has to happen is the molecules have to collide. So let's just take a look at this video together. For two molecules to react, they must collide. If an ozone molecule and a nitrogen monoxide molecule meet without enough energy to overcome their bond energies, a reaction does not occur and the molecules separate without reacting. So we're really talking about the activation energy here. So if they collide with each other, but they're too gentle, they just bump off of each other. So there's not enough energy for one atom to transfer to the other molecule. So let's now see what happens if they collide with enough energy a reaction could occur. If the two molecules collide with sufficient energy to overcome the activation barrier, but with an orientation that does not allow new bonds to form, no reaction takes place. The molecules will separate unreacted. So this would be a case where the probability of a reaction is very low when they collide in this arrangement. However, we can see that the molecules could easily collide in another way and react. So let's take a look at that. If a collision occurs between the two molecules with sufficient energy and the proper orientation, then a reaction can take place to produce molecules of O2 and NO2. So we can see in this reaction here, they have to collide with the proper orientation. In fact, there's sort of a 50-50 chance it'll collide with the correct orientation. So we saw that the ozone molecule, right, we started out with something that looked like that. And the NO had to collide in just the right way. So the NO had to collide like that for it for to be a reaction. However, if it collided uh, like this there was no reaction at all. So we can say that the probability that they collide with the right orientation is about 50% or about 0.5. So it's not just the number of collisions per second. I mean, if these molecules collided, say, 10 times every second, only half of the collisions would actually be capable of reacting, even if they came together with the activation energy.